Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Music and Vibes Podcast. I'm your host, Kiana W. Mitchell. Well, I hope everyone is having an amazing day and that you're experiencing joy and happiness and peace in your life and that you're having a good day and also that you've been having a good week. Um, last week, I was finally forced to do something that I had been putting off doing for the past month and a half, and that was enrolling my daughters in school. Now, in the school district where we live, you have to re-enroll your children every single year So it's not like it used to be where you just enroll them in kindergarten, they go all the way through, and then you enroll them for middle school and high school. No, it's not like that at all. So each year I have to enroll or re-enroll the girls into school. And it's a hassle because I don't have one child. I have three daughters. So it's a long, extensive process of uploading and answering extensive questionnaires about health and all kind of stuff. So it takes me like a half an hour. So... Let's just say, give or take, it takes like an hour and a half, but it's so strenuous and so difficult until I always put it off to the end of the month. And here you you have the date where you can start re-enrollment. So it goes from like June the 1st until the end of June. And so I was like, okay, so I usually get everything done by the end of June. However, this year um, they have a new system. So they had to send you a code. So I waited and I waited and I never got the code. They were having some issues with emails. And so it was just so much of a hassle. I just put it off. And then finally, I was like, Kiana, you just got to go ahead and do this. Because if you don't re-enroll your kids in school, then you have to register them all over again. And registering them is so difficult because you have to do a whole bunch of uploading. Like you start from scratch. They don't save anything. You just start from scratch. And you have to register your kids for school. Now, it used to be easier before we had the computer system because you just go to the district office with the documents they needed. The lady would sit down with you. You would fill out the papers. You would sign off, and your kid was in school. Okay, maybe some people might have thought it was a hassle because you had to wait in lines. But I always got there, like, super early. So I was the first person in line. She just went through my stuff, and I was good to go. But now that we have the online system, which I like, it's not that bad. You could start it. You could take a break or whatever. But this year, it just seemed more difficult because that we were going to a new system and not the system I'm used to. So we had to go to a new system, get the code, and I still had not gotten my code. So finally, near the end of the month, I um, called the lady at the district office and she sent me my codes. And once I got the codes, I did absolutely nothing. I got the documentation I needed and I was like, I'll just do this later because she made the mistake of telling me that they weren't really on a deadline just get it in as soon as possible because of everything that's going on in the world. So I was like, okay, no deadline. See, that's why I always have to have a deadline. And I always have to do things at a certain time because if I hear no deadline, then you might well forget it. I mean, it'll get done, like, eventually, but it's not anytime soon. That is why I have so many self-imposed deadlines because I just need to get it done. Okay, so back to the story. I didn't have a deadline. I was like, okay, I'll just wait. So last week, there was the email that came out from the district office, and they were like, some parents have re-enrolled their children for school. And it was like, in caps, many of you have not. And I was like, oh, crap. Okay, fine. So I sat down, and I enrolled my kids, re-enrolled them in school. And here's the funny thing, though. It took me less, like 10 minutes for each kid. I didn't realize that the new system, I love it. So it's like you fill, out the, fill it out the first time. After you fill it out, if you have multiple kids, it saves your information. So then when you open up your other kids to re-enroll them, they have all that information there. And all you have to do is that information that put in is information that's specific to that child, like their name, their social, that kind of thing. So I was finished in like 10 minutes, and this included uploading everything I needed to upload. So I was just like, oh my goodness, I don't know why I didn't do this sooner. So yeah, I finally got that done, and I was really happy. Then a few, like, hours later or maybe it was that evening I got another email an email was saying asking whether you wanted to do like a virtual option or send your kid back to traditional school now this is something I've been fighting with because you know my daughters love okay they don't love school but they like to be in school with their friends let's put it like that so they don't like to go to school because of the work they like to go to school to socialize so they like school and they like to be in school. And especially now, because my youngest daughter is going to middle school. This is like her first year of middle school. She had friends from her elementary school that was going to the same middle school. So she was excited about that. She wants she wants to do, um, I think she signed up for like a theater class. So she has a lot of things she want to do. 
my middle daughter, she's still in middle school and she's in the band with trumpet. So she had things she wanted to do. And my oldest daughter, this was like her first year in high school, like, oh my goodness. And she was going to try out for cheerleading and there were things she wanted to do. So it was difficult for me to make a decision about whether to send him, them to actual school or to do the online version of school. I know when we did it, they weren't really fans of it. But I thought about it. I sat here and thought about it. Now, I live in Alabama, and as I told you before, our coronavirus, coronavirus cases are, like, going up. So it's like they're not coming down at all. They're going up, and each day you see more and more people. So I made the decision that based on the statistics and based on the information that I had about what was occurring in our area, I made the decision that doing virtual school would be better for us this year. Now, hopefully next year things will be different. They can go back to school and things will be different. But this year, I just felt like for my family and for my kids, I wasn't willing to take a risk of trying to put them in traditional school and have them get sick. Because every single year, they get the flu. And after they get the flu, they bring it home to me and I get the flu. Or either I get like a sore throat or something. I get some variation of the flu every year because my kids are sick. And I know how this works in this family. One person gets sick and we all just fall like flies. So I was like, no, 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 we can't do that. And I also thought like at the beginning of the year, they missed like three weeks out of school, like each kid, because they had, um, one kid had flu-like symptoms, another one, then she had um, strep throat, and then she had, what else did she have? Like a respiratory infection. They all had respiratory infections, earaches, throats, sore throats, um, antibiotics, the flu. So... And then I got sick because I had strep throat. But, you know, I was like, well, we were already sick at the beginning of the year. The last thing any of us need is to come down with the coronavirus because we've already been, they've already been days out of school. They've already been sick. So I just decided that this year we're just going to do the virtual option. And next year, if things are better and they have a better handle on this virus, then, yeah, they can go back to school. So that was my decision. Now, I know that there are other parents out there, I and mean, you have the same decisions to make because you have to kind of say, okay, so do I want to, to prioritize my kid's health or do I want to let them go to school? So it's one of those things, and it's not an easy decision. Some people may think this is an easy decision to make, but it's not because if you're a working parent, you may have to send your kid back to school. And that has to be hard for you to come, you know, to figure that out or decide what to do there. And then even if you are working from home, you still have to make a decision about whether I send my kid to school or whether I just take time and I we do a virtual option, homeschool option. And it's something that parents have to decide. And believe me, I know how it was hard for me to make this decision. So I do not, I feel bad, you know, I empathize with all you parents out there who have to make this decision because we have to do what's in the best interest of our kids and what's in the best interest of our particular situation in our home. So I guess I just want to know how many, what are uh, what are you parents going to do? All my parents out there who are listeners, I just want to know what are you going to do about this this year? What I plan to do is um, put this question out on the Facebook page. You just ask, what option did you choose for a school this year, virtual or traditional school? And you can just Go to my go to the Facebook page, the Music and Vibes Podcast Facebook page, and just type in whether you're doing virtual school or traditional school. Because I know this is a decision that you had to make and you took time making, and it's just something I just want to know. So like, I just want to know what are other parents doing and what are they thinking about doing this year. All right, and even if you don't have kids and you just want to weigh in on this, feel free to go to the Music and Vibes Facebook page, and you can answer the question in the comments. All right, well, God, I can't wait to hear from you, and I can't wait to see what you're going to say. Today on the Music and Vibes podcast, I would just like to talk a little bit about some of the things that you might be doing right now in your marriage or in your relationship that is hurting your marriage or hurting your relationship instead of helping it. Now, there's an old idiom that I remember hearing when I was a kid that goes something like this. What you don't know won't hurt you. Now, I don't know where the saying came from or what they were referring to when they said what you don't know won't hurt you. 
But let me be the first to say that this is not true. What you don't know can hurt you, especially in your marriage or in your relationship. When I hear this idiom, it kind of makes me think of a kid where they cover their eyes and they think you disappeared and then they open them again and they think you reappeared. Like the whole object permanence thing comes to mind with this. Like just because you don't see something doesn't mean it can't hurt you. Just because you don't know something's going to happen doesn't know doesn't mean that it's not going to hurt you. And so it kind of makes me think about that. Now there's this show that I like to watch and it go, it's called um, Who the Bleep Did I Marry? Now this is a great show. I don't even know if it's still on it, if there are new episodes that come on. I watch it. I stream it on um, Hulu and Sling, I think. And I think it's in syndication. But anyway, it's a show about people who marry individuals that they don't know have a criminal past. There have been times when they've married people who were murderers, con artists, rapists, bank robbers, bigamists. On one episode, this lady married a guy who had AIDS and he lied and told her that he didn't. And he had infected, well, he had slept with a whole bunch of other women. Thank God no one got infected. But you know, she didn't know he had AIDS, but it could have potentially harmed her. There was another episode where this guy married this lady and she tried to kill him. There were several episodes like that. But in this particular one, the guy, he was in the army. He was laying on the couch. She came in. She tried to kill him. Then she left when he overpowered her. And then she tried to act like it wasn't her. But, you know, things like this happen in these stories. People got shot. They were almost murdered. Just because they didn't know about the past of the person that they were married to, dating, or whoever. So... Those situations put those individuals in harm's way. And even though they did not know what was going on and what their what their partners were involved in, it potentially had a negative effect on them because they almost died. I mean, bad things almost happened to them. There's another show that called, it's in syndication, I believe, and it's called um, something about my crazy ex or something like that. And it talks about people who dated individuals who had same thing, scary past, arsonists, all kind of things. And these people dated these individuals. And it had an effect on them, whether it was physical, emotional, financial, it affected them. So this just goes to show that what you don't know can actually hurt you. Sometimes in our marriage or in our relationship, we unknowingly do things that could potentially destroy or hurt the relationship. And we do it without even knowing it. Like for example, did you know that rejecting or withholding sex from your partner could cause anger or frustration and in the short term, but over a long time, it can ruin your marriage. Okay, that's one thing. Did you know that not being eight on the same page with your spouse when it comes to parenting your kids can hurt your marriage? Okay, now this is a simple one, but did you know that not validating your spouse on a regular basis can hurt your relationship? See, there's a lot of things that you can unknowingly do that can hurt your relationship. I remember when I first got married, one of the things I, I unknowingly did that had a negative effect on my marriage was telling my mom almost everything that went on in my marriage. Now, of course, in hindsight, I think that if I had to do it all over again, I probably would have kept my mouth shut and I would have kept many aspects of my relationship private. But at the time, I really didn't see anything wrong with it because my mom and I we were really close. I would tell her almost everything before we got married. And, you know, so of course, when I did get married, it's like second nature. Like, oh, I can talk to my mom if I'm mad or upset, which is good. But sometimes I just think we talk too much. We tell too many people what's happening in our relationships instead of talking to the person that we're in the relationship with. So it does no good for me to be mad at my husband and run and tell Susie or Paula or whoever what's happening in our relationship without even talking about it with my husband or my boyfriend or spouse or partner. It's like, it's counter it's counterproductive to do this, but I didn't know it, but it had a negative effect on my marriage. And my mom didn't look at him the same way. She kind of had her own opinion of him. And it, and it was all because of the fact that I went to her with every single problem that I had. I told her about any disagreement or issues that we were having, which of course biased her against my husband because you know, I was the daughter. She loved me, she knew me, and of course she's going to empathize with me. So I didn't realize it at the time, but I was hurting my marriage. So what are some things that you are doing that could be hurting your marriage? Are you shopping 
too much and hiding the shopping bags from your spouse, that can hurt your marriage. Are you lying to your partner about wanting kids when you actually don't want any kids? That could really hurt your marriage. There are so many things that may not seem like a big deal to you, but it can have a negative impact on your marriage. So in case you are wondering what you may be doing that could be harmful to your marriage, and believe me, I don't know what you're doing, but here are just some general things that people do that could harm their marriage. So here are 10 things that you could be doing that could be harmful to your marriage. The first thing that you could be doing is showing your spouse a lack of respect. Now, showing a lack of respect is quite troubling, and it can go from a range of things. You can show lack of respect by bad-mouthing them. You can show lack of respect by not listening to them or just being downright rude and condescending and belittling them. Those are ways you can show lack of respect. And this can have a negative effect in your marriage because in a relationship, or in a marriage, you need to thank the person that you're with. They need to know that they're appreciated. You should be talking to each other kindly so that you're letting each other know that there is love in this relationship. Listen, the world is already out there and there's a lot of things that happen in life that you can't help. But if you can control the environment in your home by being kind and loving and showing respect to the person that you're with, then I think that's something that's worth doing. In the long run, by showing respect, you're building your relationship instead of tearing it down. Lack of respect tears it down. Showing respect builds it up. Okay, say it with me one more time. Lack of respect tears your marriage down. Showing respect builds it up. So instead of not respecting your spouse, try to respect your spouse. Okay, the next thing is not listening to your spouse. Now, I know that you're probably thinking, I listen all the time. They're always talking to me. Well, always talking to you doesn't mean that you're listening because I know there are times when my kids, and they know it too because they try to use it to get over on me all the time. They'll be talking to me and they'll be asking me for stuff they want, especially if I'm busy. And if I'm busy and not paying attention, I'll be like, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And I didn't hear a word they said. Like the other day, they had, um, they took something from me and I was like, why did you guys just take it? You could have asked. They're like, oh, we did. You were sitting right here. You saw us. We thought it was okay. Okay, I was busy. I was doing something. I had no idea what they were doing. So you see how that works? It's like people can talk to you, but if you are not actively engaging in a conversation and actively listening, then you are not listening to your spouse. And that includes allowing your mind to wander, paying attention to your computer or television set, um, Just your body language or ignoring their body language and not trying to interpret what they're trying to say or interrupting them. It's a lot of things that you can do to indicate to your spouse that you are not listening. This is a problem because you cannot expect your spouse to be a mind reader and it's a communication mistake that people make. So not listening to your spouse is another, and that means verbally and body language wise, not listening to them. It's another mistake that people make all the time and don't even realize it. Another mistake is little or no physical intimacy. Now, a lack of of physical affection or sexual intimacy can turn lovers into just roommates. This is like a death toll for your marriage. And if you are in this kind of situation, I would advise you to seek medical advice and marriage advice and counseling if necessary, because you should not be in the same roof and not have any interest in sex. And if that is the case, You shouldn't leave your spouse to wonder what is going on. So there's a situation that's happening. Work on it, fix it, and talk about it. But don't let it continue. And that's a mistake that a lot of people make. And they don't even know that they're making this mistake. And it has a negative effect on their marriage. Another thing is that you always have to be right. Now listen, I know in relationships, you're going to argue. It's just what happens when two people come together, different backgrounds, different perspectives, different environments, and they come together. You're going to have arguments. Arguments are fine. There is nothing wrong with arguments. But when you feel that you always have to be right to win the battle, then that is a problem and you are potentially destroying your relationship. Here's the thing. You, what good is it if you win the battle but lose the war? And losing the war means you lose your marriage. So who cares if you were right that one time? You still ended up on the low end of the totem pole. I mean, you, you lost your marriage. Like, I don't even know what to say. So would it have made sense to not have been right but did what was best for the marriage in the long run? 
Many people don't think about it. Having to be right would include lecturing your spouse or having to have the last word. Now, a lot of people can love a can a lot of people can deal with a know it all, but very few people can love a know it all forever because eventually it gets tiring. Like, how can you know everything all the time? How can you always be right? And the thing is, you can't always be right. So just living with that facade, like I am always right, is damaging and hurting your relationship. One thing you can do to stop that right now is to admit when you make a mistake and admit when you don't have all the answers. It's okay. You're not supposed to have all the answers. You're not supposed to be always right. And please don't ever answer every single simple question your spouse asks you with like a long-winded, boring dissertation of the topic because that doesn't answer the question. You should be like simple, direct, answer the question, be kind, make sure that you are using words that help, um, but just make sure, make sure you're communicating effectively. It doesn't take a long story to give you an answer. You can give a quick answer to a simple question. There's nothing wrong with that. And you don't always have to be right. And I always say, be the first to apologize because if you're the first to apologize and you've done something wrong, then you are helping your marriage. Your spouse can trust you and they will too follow that path. What you're doing is helping to create a sense of security in your home by you know, by your spouse knowing, okay, I don't always have to be right. I don't always have to, answer, have to have the answers. And by them knowing that they can trust you not to always be right, not to always have the answers, not to always lecture them and look down on them. So yeah, try not, you don't have to always be right. And just remember that the need to always have to be right is destroying your relationship. Another thing that is killing relationships that people don't even know about is not doing what you say you are going to do. There's something that I always like to say. I love to say, well, actions speak louder than words because it's true. I can sit here all day and say, oh, I just love you. You're the best person ever. So happy to have you in my life. But then yet I treat you like crap. I be mean to you. I don't do anything you want me to do or ask you to do. It's just like, so what I'm saying in essence, even my words are saying that I love you. My actions are not showing that I love you. So when you say you're going to do something, or when you say you won't do something, follow through. Like, keep your promise. Keeping your promise helps to create trust in your relationship. And if it doesn't happen, it'll just erode your trust. And it'll take away the safety between you and your spouse. Your spouse has to be able to count on you. They have to be able to know that if no one else is there, they have you. <laughs> you know? So, make sure that you're going to do whatever you say you're going to do. Another thing that can damage your relationship is hurtful teasing. Now, I have seen this where and it's uncomfortable for people to watch. Like, seriously, I have been to a couple's house and this lady and her husband, well, they, there were a lot of issues with that. Anyway, and she was teasing him and she would tease him in such a mean, hurtful way. Now, it's one thing to have a joke, but to constantly have him be the butt of every joke, of every joke, um, laugh at his expense all the time, just belittle him and make him look like an idiot all the time in front of people and do all this hurtful teasing is damaging on a relationship. It's really not even a joke. It's not even teasing. It's just, let's just call it what it is. It's a put down or anything that you think that's inappropriate that's going to make your spouse embarrassed and you want to laugh about it, that is not cool and you can't be insensitive or inconsiderate because i've heard people say stuff like oh you're just being too sensitive or you just don't have a sense of humor and i'm just looking like um they do have a sense of humor this is not funny you're actually just being mean so if you find yourself hurtfully teasing your spouse please stop you're destroying your marriage and you might as well just go and tear down the bricks of your relationship because that's what you're doing. You're just destroying it, joke by joke by joke. So don't do that. Don't let that be the reason you break up. Don't let that be the reason that your marriage doesn't work out. Hurtful teasing is hurtful and you should not do it. My mom used to always tell me, okay, well, Kiana, it's not a joke unless everybody, it's not funny if the person you're laughing at is not laughing with you. So the person you're laughing at is not laughing with you. It's not funny and you should not, let your spouse be the butt of every joke or use them as an opportunity 
to make jokes about or laugh about them. If anything, you should be like encouraging them and you should be affirming them in front of people instead of tearing them down in front of people and making hurtful jokes. So if you're doing hurtful teasing, stop it, stop it, stop it. Another thing is dishonesty. A lot of people are dishonest. And you may think it's okay to tell a little white lie. But let me tell you, little white lies are not that small. Each lie you tell is almost like tearing trust down bit by bit by bit. It's not, try to think of it like this. Let's say you're mining and you have that little shovel thing or whatever and you're tearing down a wall. So every time you're dishonest, you're tearing down a wall of trust in your relationship. And trust is not easy to get. It's easy to destroy trust. It's easy to tear it down. But it is not easy to build it up again. So I always say, instead of like having to build things up again, how about we just don't tear it down? So don't be dishonest. And dishonesty includes a lot of things. Dishonesty includes um, you lying about finances or you buying things behind their back and not telling them about it. Just anything that you know is not truthful, don't do it. Your husband or your wife shouldn't have to try to figure out whether you're telling the truth or not. They shouldn't have to go to your bank account and be like, oh my goodness, what happened? I thought we had money, but you spent it. None of these things should happen. So just be honest, be upfront, be transparent. Just the same way you want them to be with you, you be with them. So do not be dishonest. There's just no room in any marriage for honesty or deceit. And like I said, a lack of trust can do more to destroy your marriage than anything. And honesty is one of the things that most people value in relationships. So let's make sure we're honest with our spouse. Another thing that um, can tear your marriage down is just nasty personal hygiene. Okay, yes, I said it. So just habits like having like terrible personal hygiene can destroy a marriage. I There's a show called Hoarders, right? And this lady was married. Her husband was on the brink of divorcing her because the house was cluttered. They had mice. They had bugs. She had the house so... She had so, such a huge hoard until there was nowhere for them to sleep, nowhere for them to walk. So he was about to leave her and take the kids. And... Because they had so much stuff in the house, they didn't have running water. It was really bad. So he, he had her meet with someone and they came and cleaned the house. And he was like, if this does not get clean, if this does not stay clean, we're done. So that shows you that nasty personal hygiene can destroy a marriage. And the worst part about it is like, when you know this is the issue because your spouse or your boyfriend has voiced this concern to you and you do not do anything about it, it can be aggravating and it's like a way of saying, well, I don't care what you think. So if anyone, if your spouse, and I mean other people can think what they want, but if your spouse or someone that's close to your spouse, the boyfriend, girlfriend, partner, whoever, if they come to you and they tell you something that you know is true, take what they're saying because they're telling you this because they love you. They're telling you this because these are the people that knows you the most. They know you the best. So they're telling you this, take what they're telling you and work on it. If there's anything, you just make an effort to make a change. Because nasty nasty personal hygiene is something that can destroy a marriage. Now also being selfish or greedy can destroy a marriage. And some people don't even think about it. They're just like, well, I'm just going to do this for me. Or I just have to have this. But they don't even think that what they're doing to their marriage is taking it down and destroying it. Like, you cannot do that. It's it's just not a good thing. It's okay, I know I'm telling you a lot about a lot of TV shows, but I just can't help it. It's a show that called Extreme Cheapskate. And these people actually they don't spend money. They hoard their money, they save it and they eat out of the trash can and do all kind of stuff. Now that's an extreme case. But how many times have you found yourself like hogging the remote control or maybe going to a cheap restaurant where you can afford better? Or not watching movies your spouse wants to watch to see. Or being just uncompromising. Like, no, I'm not going to do this. And you won't even work toward coming toward a middle ground or compromising on any level. These are ways you are being selfish and greedy. And it's not good. What you're doing, you're hurting your marriage. And if you didn't know that you're hurting your relationship, well, let me be the one to tell you, you are hurting your relationship. So if you find yourself doing any of these things, stop and think about it. Would you want your your spouse to be like 
not share with you or just be greedy and selfish? You wouldn't. Would you want your boyfriend or girlfriend to be that way? No. Do you want your partner to be this way? No. You don't want any of these things to happen. So I would just say the best thing to do, think of the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So if you don't want people to be selfish to you or greedy, then don't do it to them. It's just as easy as that. Now, having temper tantrums is another way to destroy your marriage. Now, every couple is going to need some form of conflict resolution because, like I said earlier, conflict is common in relationships. However, you cannot throw a tantrum and cry about it and try to manipulate the person so that you can win or say you can get your way. You have to handle conflict in a constructive way. And having an angry outburst so that you can just win an argument is going to make you the loser in the end. It's manipulative. And you have to learn how to fight fair. Now, uh, I believe last season, season three, I did an episode on fighting fair. So if you're having a hard time thinking about how to fight fair in your relationship, go listen to that episode in season three. And it's called How to Fight Fair. And it can tell you and give you some advice on what you can do to start fighting fair in your marriage. Because at the end of the day, you want the marriage to be the winner of any disagreement you have. So instead of saying, I have to win or he's winning, no, 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 the marriage needs to win. So that means you two have to take yourselves out of it and do what's best for the relationship. So that is what you need to do. And if you find yourself having temper tantrums, then you do need to get some type of professional help to help you understand why you're doing this so that you can change your behavior. Now, all of the things that I mentioned can potentially hurt your marriage or your relationship. So if you're doing any of these things, now that you know how they could potentially be harmful to your marriage or to your relationship, I would encourage you right now to stop doing those things and make an effort to change your behavior. Now you may need to see a counselor to find out why you are exhibiting these types of behaviors and then work on changing your behavior. None of us are perfect and we all make mistakes, but the important thing is to learn from our mistakes. I like to say we're not making mistakes, we're learning lessons, you know? Don't beat yourself up about things that you've done in the past. Instead, focus on what you can do differently today because it's today that counts. It's not too late to change the course or the direction of your marriage. So I just want to tell you that this week, and I also want to encourage you to this week begin making the positive changes that you want to see in your marriage. Also, I would like to say your spouse would thank you for it. I know I say this a lot, but you know, in the end, I think your spouse is going to say thank you. And you're going to thank yourself later on when you see how your marriage is improving and how much better you are as a partner, spouse, individual. You'll see how much better you are as the person that you want to be. Now, the song that we're going to listen to today is called I Didn't Know. And this song is about a woman who found out the hard way that what she didn't know could hurt her. Here's a song. I didn't know. My heart skipped to beat when I heard her voice. It was hard for me to listen to the pain I heard. I could tell her heart was breaking. She was in disbelief. And we couldn't find the words to express our grief. Was crying for the love she I was crying for the love I thought I had We did not understand We were in love with the same man Crying for the love she lost I was crying for the love I thought I had We thought we had everything But we were up with the same I was so
Before I end the podcast, I just want to say thank you to BetterHelp for partnering with the Music and Vibes podcast to provide a resource for the listeners. Guys, BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, is a counseling service online that is partnering with the Music and Vibes podcast to help you guys if you need counseling to get the best counseling you can get. One reason why I am thrilled to be working with BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, is because of the fact that they are one of the best online counseling services for couple counseling, marriage counseling, relationship counseling. So since that's what we talk about all the time, I thought it would be awesome if you guys had this resource available. Now, is there something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? Better, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P, Better Help, will assist your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours, which is awesome. Now, Better Help, H-E-L-P, is not a crisis line, is not a self-help line. It is a professional counseling done securely online. So this is a professional counselor. This is not self-help. This is not a crisis line. You actually have your own professional counselor who will help you online. And everything is secure, so you don't have to worry about your information getting out. There's a broad range of expertise available, which may not be available locally. So this is great because you have access to services that may not be available in your local area. The service is available for clients worldwide. So no matter where you are, you can get the help and you can also receive services from BetterHelp. You can just log onto your account anytime and you can send a message to your counselor. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses, plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room, as with traditional therapy. And I think this is great, especially now with the pandemic. You don't have to sacrifice your mental health and you don't have to sacrifice your marriage because you can't see someone or talk to someone. You can, you can talk to someone, you can see someone all from the comforts of your own living room, your bedroom, wherever you are, you can get the help that you need. BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and is free of charge to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional online counseling and, well, it's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and Financial aid is available. This is the best part because I hear so many people say, well, I can't get counseling because I don't have the money to do it and I just can't. Let me tell you, BetterHelp is offering all of my listeners a 10% discount off of their first month. So this is something to help. In addition, the fact that they have financial aid available to help you is amazing. And I've looked at the prices. It is way more affordable than traditional counseling. I know at one point when my husband and I, we were um, doing counseling, it was almost like $100 an hour, but with better help, it's more affordable and it's less than that. So if you need counseling, please try it, look it up, see what you can do because it's more affordable than your traditional offline counseling. And like I said, financial aid is available and it's a 10% discount for my listeners if you sign up for help with better help. They want you to start living a happy life today and I think that's important because all of us want to have a happy life and in order for you to have that relationship that you've always dreamed of you have to be the best person that you can be and to be the best person that you can be if it requires getting counseling then please get it because that is what you need to do I realized in my marriage it didn't start to turn around until I started working on myself Kiana when I started working on me then things started to get better and that is the thing that was amazing okay now what you can do to get their services is visit their website and once you visit their website you can sign up and you can get services so visit better help website and that's better h-e-l-p and you will be able to get services all you have to do is just sign up and you can get the services now what i'm going to do is put in the show notes a link that you can press on so that it'll take you directly to their website. And once it takes you to their website, in the promo code, put music and vibes. And then you will get that 10% discount off your first month. And this is only a special offer for the Music and Vibe podcast listeners. So whoever's listening, if you need it, this is a special offer for you. 
And I'm glad that I can do this, and I'm glad that they're going to offer it to our to my listeners. But you will get a special discount of 10% off your first month. So guys, go ahead. If you need it, sign up for it. Get the help that you need. Because I always say, if you were sick, you'd see a doctor. If your marriage is not doing well, get some help. So go to better, B-E-T-T-E-R-A-T-L-P. Click the link in the show notes and then put in a promo code, Music and Vibes, so that you can get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp. I just want to say I'm excited about this partnership and I hope that you guys take advantage of it because this is something that I'm that many people need but it's not available. So just want to let you know help is available and your help is available with better help. I also want to thank you guys for listening to the podcast. You guys are just so amazing and I just love each and every one of you. And I know it sounds crazy because I haven't seen you, never met you, but I love you guys. I appreciate you listening. The fact that you are also so interested in working on your marriage and working on your relationships, it really resonates with me. And so I just want to say thank you so much for listening. There would not be a Music and Vibes podcast without you listening to the Music and Vibes podcast. So love you and thank you. I also want to encourage you, if you know anyone that needs to hear the podcast today, to just share the podcast. I encourage you to find one friend, family member, co-worker, whoever, one person and share this podcast with them. And let's see what we can do together to help people know that there is hope and that they can work on their relationships. Because as we learned in today's episode, what you don't know can hurt you. I also want to encourage you to go to iTunes or Apple Podcasts and subscribe to the podcast. So what we're going to do is I'm going to leave a link in the show notes and you can click on it and subscribe to the podcast so that way if a new episode come out and i am starting to do guest appearances on other episodes so if i want to put that out for you to hear you will be able to get it immediately because you would have subscribed to the podcast so today i encourage you to subscribe and share say it with me subscribe and share subscribe and share yes subscribe to the podcast share the podcast so that our community can get bigger and we can make a difference and an impact in the lives of many couples who are busy trying to make their marriages work there's hope there's help there's a community out there that wants to see you succeed so subscribe and share all right well i don't have anything else to say if you guys want to contact me I am going to go and put all my contact information in the show notes and you can feel free to contact me. The best way to contact me, you can contact me on the Music and Vibes podcast Facebook page or you can just contact me on our website, musicandvibes.com and you can just put click on the contact button and you can contact me there. Now you can also listen to older episodes on the Music and Vibes of the Music and Vibes podcast on musicandvibes.com. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. Hope you have an amazing day, an amazing week. Enjoy the rest of your week. And try this week to do something special for your spouse or your boyfriend, girlfriend, significant other, partner. Try to do something special for them to let you know, that let them know that they are loved and that they are appreciated. And if you are doing any of those things that we talked about that can hurt your relationship, stop doing it now. All right, well, I'll talk to you later. Bye.